Processional hymn is number 192, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. That's number 192 in your hymnal.
morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Grant us, Lord, our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you, a prophet to the nations, I appointed you. But do you gird your loins, stand up and tell them all that I command you? Be not crushed on their account, as though I would leave you crushed before them. For it is I this day who have made you a fortified city a pillar of iron, a wall of brass against the whole land, against Judah's kings and princes, 
against its priests and people. They will fight against you, but not prevail over you. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It is not jealous, it is not pompous. It is not inflated, it is not rude. It does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered, it does not brood over injury, it does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hope all things, endures all things. Love never fails. If there are prophecies, they will be brought to nothing. If tongues, they will cease. If knowledge, it will be brought to nothing. For we know partially, and we prophesy partially, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I used to talk as a child, think as a child, reason as a child. When I became a man, I put aside childish things. At present, we see indistinctly as in a mirror, but then face to face. At present, I know partially. Then I shall know fully, as I am fully known. So faith, hope, love remain, these three, but the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus began speaking in the synagogue saying, today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, isn't this the son of Joseph? He said to them, surely you will quote me this proverb, physician, cure thyself and say, do here in your native place the things we heard you were done in Capernaum. And he said, amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow of Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him down headlong. But Jesus passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. everyone you all survived <laughs> how was it around you guys pretty bad or yeah <laughs> they're still working on our streets if you saw when you came in <clears throat> well today we were supposed to speak about st paul's teaching on the greatest of gifts but because there's a, a lot of people who are still uh, snowed in we'll postpone it until next weekend in the first reading we heard the call of jeremiah the prophet and Jeremiah is an interesting prophet. Before he even opens his mouth to proclaim the word of God, the Lord tells him that his own people will fight against him and give him a very hard time. He's different than, than Isaiah. Isaiah was kind of like a wonder worker. Every time Isaiah would open his mouth, it was like people would convert right before him, or, and he would challenge the kings or princes, and they would back down before him. Jeremiah was completely different. He would open his mouth, his own people would go after him. He would open his mouth against others and the rulers and they would hunt him. And he faced all different kinds of persecutions that you see throughout his life, especially throughout his book. And he's, because of that, he's not bitter, but when you read it, he's often complaining to God about, you know, look at what you're putting me through. And none of this is working like you want me to do. It seems like you're just setting me up for failure. But from the very beginning, the Lord promises to deliver him, and he does. Of all the prophets of the Old Testament, Jeremiah is most like Jesus in this way that he is persecuted, not in his, his complaining. The first time Jesus preaches to his own people, what do they do? They try and throw him off the cliff that their town's built on. Jeremiah, the prophets, and Jesus proclaim the word of God and they experience persecution and rejection because of it. And Jesus told us that it, that's true for all those who live by the word of God and share it with others. He told us at the Last Supper that a servant isn't greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they'll persecute you. And so some people do, either because they want to silence the word of God because it might prick their conscience to give up some bad habit in their life, or because they'll fight those who are speaking out against some injustice, either personal or justice and injustice in society, and they don't want to give it up because they're profiting off of it and benefiting from it, or simply because they want to drive out the word of God from the face of the earth. Whatever the cause, Jesus calls his disciples and prophets to be faithful to the gospel, and he tells them that when they endure persecution and hardship for the gospel, they're blessed. That's one of Jesus' beatitudes, and that they should rejoice and be glad because their reward will be great in heaven. Because what are they doing? They're following in his footsteps and in the footsteps of the same prophets who suffered persecution for the sake of the word of God. Jesus isn't telling us to go and seek persecution though. Instead, he's calling us to love, the, to love him, to love the word of God, 
to love our brothers and sisters in the church and to love especially those who may persecute us or others. Because the suffering that Jesus calls blessed isn't blessed because, you know, suffering's good in in and of itself. It's blessed because it's the way that Jesus loves. The martyrs and those who suffer for the faith love God too much to be able to deny him. Their love for those who are suffering injustices is too much to be able to keep silent. And their love for their persecutors is too much to not proclaim the word of God to them, which will bring them the only true happiness, freedom, and joy. This is the only preparation that we need to be worried about to be able to witness to one's faith under trial or persecution, to faithfully love him and his word, and to love and pray for our brothers and sisters, whether they're our friends or enemies. The Holy Spirit, Jesus promised, will take care of the rest when the time comes. But there is one other thing that we can do, and that's to pray often for those Christians who suffer in the world right now for the word of God to pray for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon them. Because St. Paul taught us last week that when one member of the body of Christ suffers, what happens? All suffer with them. We should live that kind of solidarity and companionship with those who are suffering so that when the Lord comes and the trials of this life are over, we can also share what St. Paul also told us, that when one member rejoices, all rejoice. In that day, we'll be able to share in the joy of our common witness to the gospel. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For the intentions of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Bishop David O'Connell, and for our priests and brothers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the men and boys of our parish, whom God is calling to be priests and brothers, especially in the Red Bank Oratory of St. Philip Neri, and for the women and girls whom God is calling to be sisters, that they have the courage to say yes to him, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For husbands and wives and widows and widowers, that they lead their families to greater holiness and fidelity to Christ and his church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the sick, and those in need, that the Lord may inspire in us new ways of serving him and them, and for an end to this pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the deceased members of our families and parish, and for those who have no one to pray for them, that our prayers may accompany them as they are prepared for paradise, we pray to the Lord. 
Glory to God. For Mary Hanlon and Sister Macrina Quinn, and for all the special intentions of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Glory to God. Heavenly Father, in your kindness and mercy, we ask you to please hear and answer our prayers according to your will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The offertory hymn is number 105, Christ is the world's light. That's number 105. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept our sacrifice of hands, for the praise and glory of His name, for our good that we will all His holy church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with francis our pope and david our bishop and all the clergy Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. for this fourth Sunday of Ordinary Time can be found on page 94 of your Missal.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O oh Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Next Sunday starts the 6 p.m. Mass that we're adding to the Sunday Mass schedule, um, and that'll be from, from here out on on Sundays at 6 p.m. Youth Oratory and Children's Oratory will also begin meeting again on uh, Sundays from 7 to 8.30 p.m. And uh, Youth Oratory and Children's Oratory is for children in 5th to 12th grade and their families and friends. This Friday is also First Friday. There will be adoration from 7 to 8 p.m. here in the church. And then on Wednesday and Thursday this week are two uh, feast, feast days during the, the year. Uh, Wednesday is the Feast of the Presentation. So after those two daily Masses at 7.30 a.m. and 12.15, we'll have the traditional blessing of candles if you want to bring candles to be blessed at that Mass. We'll also do that blessing after all the Masses next week and for anyone who can't make it during the week. And then on Thursday is the feast day of St. Blaise. We'll have the traditional blessing of throats after the 7.30 a.m. Mass that day. And that will also be done after all the Masses next weekend as well if you can't make it uh, this Thursday. So get your candles and your throats blessed this week or next weekend. Sound good? <laughs> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The recessional hymn is number 268, To Jesus Christ, Our Sovereign King. It's number 268.